Today, it's the desserts. It feels like I'm trailing, yeah, again. The fourth and final course for Paul and Richard in the Northern Irish heat. Another day, another dollar. But has the cook-off turned into a love-in? Richard, <laughs> how do I look? Well, Paul, after working with you a few days, I'm starting to feel, you know what I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a camper side to, to Paul Rankin I haven't seen in a I'm while, I'm comfortable you know? with my feminine side. But Paul's bouquet isn't for Richard. It's a fancy touch to his dessert dish. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, good morning. How are we today? It's the last leg, huh? Yeah. What's your pudding? Buttermilk cream with rhubarb and rose water. What about you, Richard? Well, it's rhubarb again with nutmeg and a vanilla ice cream and some Alfonso mango. OK, <laughs> let battle commence. Good luck. Now, neither chef could have known what the other was planning to cook, so it's pure chance that they're both using the same main ingredient. For his dessert, Paul's creating buttermilk cream with rhubarb and rose petals. And Richard's making rhubarb compote with mango and vanilla ice cream. Later on, they'll be trying each other's out. I like it. I just don't think it has the wow factor. I think the judge will like this. But it won't all be praise, I can assure you. Well, I reckon you've been trying to copy my dessert, Richard. You've got rhubarb. <laughs> I've got rhubarb. Oh, Paul, Paul. I've got shortbread. You've got Paul. shortbread. I've got. Look, we're looking at the ingredients. Paul. We've got. But each chef is, of course, putting a personal spin on the rhubarb. But look, buttermilk. Again, that's the Irish coming in. I, I brought it along. The Alfonso mango. Food of the gods, man. Yeah, food of the gods. The food of the gods, you know. Well, you're a bit of a wacky cook, aren't no, you? No, no. Huh? Just... Every little dish has had something wacky in no. there. Right? It may be wacky, but Richard's employing a very traditional technique, using one ingredient to complement another. It's a wonderful way to deal with rhubarb, which can be a bit sour and boring. And you know what I mean, into the stew, into this, into that, and I've cooked. When you deal with a bit of mango, ooh, baby, you know? Richard's compote is essentially a fruit stew. He's going to simmer the rhubarb in a syrup, which he's making out of sugar, water, a dash of grenadine, ginger, and a hint of rosemary. Bring it up to the boil. Start on a rhubarb. This looks like a fantastic piece of rhubarb, I have to say. It's very old-fashioned, isn't it? It is only really, I mean, came back in over the last 10, 10 12 years. Oh. But rarely would you see anything rhubarb on the menu before that. And I've, al I've always cooked with it because I, I like cooking from things from the garden. I know you're very particular yeah. about sourcing all your ingredients. Where does this rhubarb come from? Well, we have a little farm that grows everything for us. Richard tried to get rhubarb in Northern Ireland, but it's the wrong time of year, so he bent the rules slightly. There's only one place in the British Isles known for out-of-season rhubarb, and that's near Wakefield in Yorkshire. Richard made the journey up north to visit his supplier in the mysterious Rhubarb Triangle. Supplier David Westwood also bends the rules slightly. David. Which How are you? Very well, thank you. You're very, right. very well. You do, right, Long old drive, but there you go. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to come up here was to, to tell the British public about your force rhubarb. That's taken two weeks to grow that. The ones in the field will take probably two months. Two weeks? Show me your secrets. Tell oh. me. I'm I'll tell you some of them. Some of them. Some of them.